Oh, okay. Some questions that I often get asked. Um, people ask me, what do I think about LS swaps? The LS crowd. The cult-like following that the LS followers all participate in with each other. I thought it was cool 10 years ago. I thought it was cool when my buddy got his 88 GT and swapped in a 6 liter twin turbo and, you know, had a thousand horsepower rig running around and was just destroying people. 10 years later, I don't think it's so cool anymore. I actually can't even really stand them. People throw the originality out the window. And they're just looking for the cheap, quick, bumping performance. A way to get the vehicle going fast. And now all the builds look the same. All the engines look the same. All the LS swaps at a car meet or, you know, a, a car show or something like that. You get a bunch of hot rods and you look at them, they all look the same now under the hood. You know, I like the guys that used to that used to take the old Pontiac motors, the old Ford motors and stuff, and build them up and sleeve them and everything else. And, you know, they had to put some serious dough into those things and make them all original or, you know, it would mean something to them. And they'd build them up. They'd make a thousand horsepower, but they'd have to spend more money. Typically, more proud of what they have because of what they had to go through to get there. What do I think about the LS crowd? It's kind of played out, honestly. You know, I know there's going to always be a need for cheap, fast performance. But at the end of the day, everybody's doing it. It's nothing cool anymore. You just have a fast car. Okay. You're going you're in a hurry to go nowhere fast. If you're doing it on the street, it's illegal. So you get your shit taken from you anyway. So may as well make it cheap. So I guess the LS crowd would fit. Because if you get your stuff impounded and taken. Eh, you could have lost a lot more if you were being authentic with it. And kept the car original or whatever it may be. And I'm kind of one of those people that. I could make an exception for an engine swap in, in a vehicle where it didn't belong. But I'm not really for that to be honest with you. I like the Chevy engines to stay in the Chevys. And the Ford engines to stay in the Fords. But that's just me. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be, it is, uh, it's going to be a thorn in the side of the LS guys, you know, guys that watch this video or whatever, they're not going to like what I have to say, but that's okay. There's an LS guy in every crowd, every conversation. It's nothing new. It's nothing authentic anymore. It's nothing to really brag about. It's easy to make power and blow up a $400 engine, then turn around, put another $400 engine in, do it again. Not a problem. It's also nothing that's to be thought of as, man, wow, that's great that you were able to figure all that out and come up with this combination to make that kind of power and stuff. And no, you didn't because it's, it's already been done a thousand times. So you just basically went by... The manual, the aftermarket world's handbook, and threw a bunch of stuff together and put a bunch of turbos and stuff on it and made it all work and then sent something out to some guy and he sent you a tune back and watched you driving around and stuff and uh, what everything looked like under under boost and then you sent it back to him and he remapped everything and then sent it back to you. You put it back in the car and now you got a race car. Technology is crazy, right? There's really nothing to be proud of in that though. Hey, you got a cool car, but you didn't really put that much into it. It's not like it was back in the old days where you had to figure out how to port your heads a certain way and how to do this and how to get more compression out of it and how to jet your carburetor this way and how to load up the suspension this way and that way. And, you know, I'm, I'm leaning out in this area here, so I'm going to have to try to figure out how I'm going to adjust my timing and my fuel quality or quantity and stuff. And you, you'd have to put way more into it and be be way more in touch with the car and today it's just slap some shit together put a tune in it and send it to the races you know i have we have a couple of trucks with ls engines 
The 2007 runs a hell of a lot better than the 2013 does. The 2013 sounds like shit. It sounds like it's got lifter tick. Change the oil, it's good for about a thousand miles, the tick comes right back again. You know, the 07 that we have, I've already resealed the pan, the oil pressure regulator updated with the hat, the driver's side valve cover, the quarter inch holes drilled in the baffle with the bigger port for the PCV, and it runs better and doesn't make nowhere near the noise. It does have some lifter ticks sometimes, which I'm trying to keep under control. I got to keep the oil changed more often in it. Because if I'm if I'm if I'm not constantly changing the oil in this thing and I let it drag out to like five six thousand miles on this truck, which I don't like doing, but if I did because the old lady won't remind me to, hey my oil lights on, uh, it'll start ticking right at about four or five thousand miles. So I got to keep it changed religiously all the time by like thirty five hundred four thousand, and keep fresh oil in this thing because if I don't do that, this thing starts making all kinds of noise. But the thirteen sounds worse than the seven does. It's, you know, that AFM crap that they started using in 2007 really did a number on those trucks. So, I don't know. My thoughts on the, the LS crowd. I think it's a great, cheap platform to build power if you're not wanting to put a lot of money. Nothing to really be super proud of, to be honest with you, because there's not a lot of hard work involved in making it work for most situations, because now there's a on the shelf tune and box set up for everything now with an LS. Just not a huge fan of it. Don't think there's really any real authenticity there. So I would have to say I bow out on the LS crowd. I respect them, but they're annoying. I hate hearing about their LS build. Everybody's doing it. There's it's really nothing cool anymore. Um and I like authenticity better. I like people that they're willing to work and make work with what they have already in that vehicle. Or something from that manufacturer that can go in that vehicle. So, yeah, the LS crowd is not so cool to me. Truly really not. 10, 15 years ago, sure. Now, nah. It's nothing to be cool. It's just, it's just really not cool. That's my thoughts on it, guys. Uh, you guys asked. I gave it to you. A lot of these questions come from TikTok where people can actually ask me questions a lot more often and uh, I could actually take their question and pin it on the screen and then talk about their question rather than what I'm having to do here is talk about it and then not show you guys the question. I hope you all have a great weekend. Be blessed.